Hi and welcome back to freesciencelessons.co.uk. By the end of this video you should be able to state what's meant by relative formula mass. You should then be able to calculate the relative formula mass for a compound. We've already seen that the relative atomic mass of an element is the average mass of the isotopes of that element weighted to take into account the abundance of each isotope. And remember that the word abundance tells us how common an isotope is. The element chlorine has got two main isotopes. Both have an atomic number of 17, as all isotopes of chlorine have got 17 protons in their nucleus. This isotope of chlorine has a mass number of 35, because it has 18 neutrons in its nucleus, whereas this isotope has 20 neutrons in its nucleus, so it has a mass number of 37. If you look on the periodic table, you can see that the mass number of chlorine is actually 35.5. This is the average of 35 and 37, but it's weighted for the abundance of each isotope. Chlorine 35 is more abundant than chlorine 37. In this video, we're looking at relative formula mass, so here's the definition. The relative formula mass of a compound is the sum of the relative atomic masses of the atoms in the numbers shown in the formula. Relative formula mass has got this symbol. Now, there are a couple of key facts that you need to know about relative formula mass. Firstly, relative formula mass has got no units. Secondly, relative formula mass never involves big numbers. Let's look at an example. This shows the formula of methane. We can see that we've got one atom of carbon bonded to four atoms of hydrogen. I'm going to calculate the relative formula mass of methane. In the exam, you're given the relative atomic masses that you need, so here they are. Carbon has a relative atomic mass of 12, and hydrogen's got a relative atomic mass of 1. So because we've got one carbon atom, we've got 1 times 12. Because we have four hydrogen atoms, then we have 4 times 1. Adding all of these together gives us a relative formula mass for methane of 16. And remember that there are no units for relative formula mass. Take a look at this formula. I've now put a large 2 in front of the formula for methane. This means that we now have two molecules of methane. Now, it's important to remember that we do not use big numbers to calculate relative formula mass, so the relative formula mass is still 16. This is the formula for calcium sulfate. I'd like you to pause the video now and work out the relative formula mass for this compound. OK, we've got one atom of calcium, and calcium's got a relative atomic mass of 40. We've got one atom of sulfur, and sulfur's got a relative atomic mass of 32. Finally, we've got four atoms of oxygen, and oxygen's got a relative atomic mass of 16. Adding all of these together gives us a relative formula mass of 136. Here's one more for you to try. This is magnesium hydroxide. Again, pause the video and work out the relative formula mass for this compound. We've got one atom of magnesium, and magnesium has a relative atomic mass of 24. We've got two atoms of oxygen, and oxygen's got a relative atomic mass of 16. And finally, we've got two atoms of hydrogen, and hydrogen has a relative atomic mass of 1. Adding all of these together gives us a relative formula mass for magnesium hydroxide of 58. And again, remember that relative formula mass has got no units. You'll find plenty of questions on calculating relative formula mass in my revision workbook, which you can get by clicking on the link above. OK, so hopefully now you should be able to state what's meant by relative formula mass. You should then be able to calculate the relative formula mass for a compound. 